Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. So tonight we're going to start with the story that many of you are discussing because it's all over social media tonight. Politico is reporting a draft opinion from the U.S. Supreme Court suggests that the Supreme Court could overturn Roe versus Wade. That news already sparking demonstrations near the U.S. Supreme Court at this hour. It's also important to know, though, this draft does not mean this is a done deal. The story is being reported by multiple outlets. Both ABC News and the Associated Press have not yet verified the authenticity of the draft opinion shared by Politico tonight. The draft opinion part of a case involving Mississippi's abortion ban. It's dated February 10th was written by conservative Justice Samuel Alito. Justices can change their votes during the drafting process. The court has not announced a ruling in the case, but that is expected to happen in June or July. Also, the 1973 ruling in Roe versus Wade said the Constitution protected a woman's right to an abortion, but the draft notes that the Constitution does not reference abortion. It goes on to say, quote, it is time to heed the Constitution and return the issue of abortion to the people's elected representatives, end quote. Of course, we're going to continue to follow the latest developments on this story, and you can also read more about it on KSAT.com. San Antonio saved the small business early on in the pandemic. Lines of people showed up to help this cookie cafe stay in business on the far west side. But the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic are still being felt in a major way tonight. It's an issue for many small and locally owned businesses. But for the owner of San Antonio's only Nestle Tollhouse Cafe, it's, it's forced her to shut down for good. The night team's Lee Waldman has this KSAT 12 exclusive. The handwritten sign is temporary, but its message is permanent. The Nestle Toll House Cafe off 1604 has served its last customers. It's just, uh, we're just not able to um, uh, keep up with all, all the bills and uh, make ends meet. In November 2020, the community showed up for owner Sherry Ramirez. The support allowed her to get through 2021, but today marked the end of her dream. I really uh, started this uh, cafe to, to be a light to this community and help people out. The rising costs of supplies, labor, and delays in the supply chain are forcing her hand. It's just uh, at a point right now that I, I, I just don't see us recovering uh, from all that COVID has brought to us. The cookie shop isn't alone. Kelsey Erickson Stryford with the Texas Restaurant Association says they estimate nine to 10,000 restaurants closed in Texas during the pandemic. Now we're, we're worried, frankly, that we're gonna see another wave of closures that is directly tied to those cost increases. TRA is helping. It's starting a grant program that is expected to open in early summer. Specifically for hospitality and tourism businesses that have been impacted by the pandemic. However, that assistance is just not soon enough for Ramirez. It hurts really bad. This is my baby and um, I invested my whole life savings into this place. We checked in with the Small Business Administration. Given that it is National Small Business Week, they're no longer offering any new pandemic assistance, but their original resources and assistance is still out there. We have more of those details on our website. That's KSAT.com. Reporting live, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Have to feel for that business owner, though. Thank you, Lee. Well, another loss for a local nonprofit, a new life for a new generation meant to help families and their children with things like diapers and formula. But our Defenders investigation exposed questionable spending with state funding. That included buying up land to grow industri industrial hemp. Now the nonprofit selling that land at a loss. Records show the land on Buena Vista Street purchased for $25,000. The nonprofit sold it to someone else for $23,000. Other questionable spending included out of state trips, a smoke shop. Since the Defenders investigation, state reimbursements have been suspended for this nonprofit. The nonprofit has also closed one of its San Antonio locations. My kids are in danger. That what I just told you, that's what people heard in the courtroom during the murder for hire trial of Angelica Navarro de Paz. Today's day four of that trial, Navarro de Paz is accused of hiring an undercover officer to kill her boyfriend's sister over a $40,000 debt. Today, her estranged husband took the stand to testify about alleged threats that his family faced from the confidential informant and the alleged would-be victim. 
He continued to speak over the prosecution's objections, and when he had that outburst, the judge then removed the jury. And then after a recess, that man continued to speak. And so the, the law... It's just that right now I have the chance to speak. Dijeron, ah, tenemos algo preparado para Angélica que no se, no se imagina lo que le espera. They said, we have something prepared for Angélica and she can't even imagine what's coming. If found guilty, Navarro de Paz is facing up to 99 years or life in prison. The testimony in this trial continues tomorrow. The Silver and Black making headlines, and tonight we have seen the actual proposal that would move games out of the Alamo City. It's a story KSAT 12 broke today. San Antonio may be home of the Spurs. The NBA franchise, though, looking to move some of its home games beyond city limits, even into other countries. Bear County owns the Spurs home court. The AT&T Center has a deal with the team that allows up to two home games outside of that center per season. But County Judge Nelson Wolf says, and we, we have seen tonight confirms, the team wants to double that limit for the next two seasons with two international home games, two more within 100 miles. Wolf says the Spurs have mentioned playing in Monterrey, Mexico City, and at the Alamo Dome as possibilities, and that while they haven't specified it, Austin is the other city they'd like to include. It would be up to them how they work out the schedule with the uh... NBA, as you know, it's been a little bit of a hassle for them during the rodeo to do all those home, those away games all at the same time. So there, there could be some shift in that. So what do the Spurs have to say about all this? Is it good business or are they testing the waters on moving more games to Austin? Greg Simmons will have their response coming up in sports. San Antonio ISD has a new leader. The district's board confirmed Dr. Jaime Aquino as the next superintendent for its 45,000 students. Who would have thought that someone like me from a third world country whose English is not his first language would have had this amazing opportunity to lead this district in this great city? Dr. Aquino is from the Dominican Republic. He was a teacher and held leadership roles in the Los Angeles and Denver school districts. Dr. Aquino says that he wants to turn San Antonio ISD into a destination school district for families and educators. His other top priorities are engaging the community and, of course, balancing the budget. By the way, he officially starts that job tomorrow. Good luck to him. Tomorrow I begin on this listening tour and meeting as many people from the community, from our, our school to learn about their hopes and aspiration. And that will help us really shape up what is going to be our new strategic plan. Dr. Aquino has a five-year contract with the district. He's going to make $315,000 a year. During his acceptance speech, Jaime, as the superintendent wants to be called, got very personal. It's a speech that you can hear for yourself. It's on our website, ksat.com. Just look for the story. And now for a look at your headlines in your night beat news flash. San Antonio police searching for the person who killed two men in a laundry room. It happened at an apartment complex on the southwest side. Both of the men shot last night. Officers hoping anyone at the Arbors at Rustleaf Apartments may help in this case. So far, the identities of the victims have not been released. Anyone with information that may help urge to call police. The Anti-Defamation League showing 2021 held the highest number of anti-Semitic incidents since 1979. That's across the country. But San Antonio saw two of those incidents in that report. Flyers with swastikas left in neighborhoods last month. Nationwide attacks on Jewish institutions up 61%. Here at home, Rabbi Mara Nathan says she's used the new federal funding to help increase security measures at Temple Bethel. And tomorrow, your last day to vote early in the May 7th election on the ballot. Several proposals, including one that would increase the homestead exemption. It would go from $25,000 to $40,000. Now, if this is approved, it's expected to save homeowners an average of $176 on their property tax bill. More details about the ballot on KSAT.com. That's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. Let's take a live look outside right now. Right there you see the U.S. flag flying over the Tower of Life building downtown. The flag, obviously, you could see waving there in the wind. Perfect opportunity to bring in our friend meteorologist Adam Kasky. Adam, all right, so we just started a new month. 
What does this mean for the weather department? Well, May typically is when, at least across the state of Texas, we see severe weather season ramp up. And really not just Texas, but a good portion of the U.S. is seeing elevated severe weather typically in May. And you look at the past 20 years for Texas as a whole, May by and large the most active month for severe weather reports across the state. Now this doesn't mean that we're going to have more severe weather guaranteed locally around here, South and Central Texas. Just the odds are the highest in the month of May around Texas and even in our neck of the woods typically. But today the severe weather has been off to the north this afternoon and evening parts of Oklahoma now moving into Arkansas as well and even into North Texas closer to Dallas. A little boundary there helping to kickstart some severe weather. That's all going to stay away from us, but we do have some storm chances to talk about. We'll get into that in a little bit and get ready for a hot weekend. I'll tell you how hot just a bit. We're going to take you behind the kitchen door coming up. Also a closer look at a growing problem. The struggle to keep teachers from leaving the classroom. The problems that teachers and districts say they're seeing. Cleanliness and certifications, those concerns are taking us behind the kitchen door tonight. Metro Health says that a restaurant on the far west side was just one point away from failing. We're talking about Grand Tequila Restaurant and Cantina. It's on Highway 151 and Ingram Road. Now, it needs a new inspection. Late March, it got a score of 70. Inspector said they found a dirty ice chest with cooked tortillas inside. Metro Health also said that workers there were touching cell phones and other items and then handling the masa for the tortillas. Health inspectors say that all restaurant workers need to wash their hands before handling food. During that inspection, food handler certificates also weren't presented. In its report, Metro Health says the manager claimed that they were in the office, but they couldn't get to the office that day. It's a story that we also have for you on KSAT.com. Now, we're also keeping track of the best scores among restaurants in San Antonio. We have a list of businesses with perfect inspection scores. You can check them out in our Behind the Kitchen Door section on KSAT.com. New tonight, teachers quitting at unprecedented rates. Surveys in two districts suggest the mounting pressures amid this pandemic, forcing seasoned teachers out of the classroom. The Bear County Federation of Teachers Union conducted the surveys. Participants at South San ISD show 41% of people considered leaving their profession. For Northeast ISD, 63% considered leaving. The night team's Patty Santos reports that there's no easy solution and the aftermath could have a huge impact on our communities. I teach social studies at Burbank High School on the south side of San Antonio. I've been a teacher for seven years. Luke Amphlett loves his job, but he's still undecided on whether he will teach next year. The ever-increasing workload, the frozen pay year after year, um, is kind of an increasing level of stress that is making me and just about everybody I work with think about walking away and doing something else. He's one of many seasoned educators considering leaving the classroom. Because the student enrollment was down because of the pandemic, some school districts were happy to let those teachers go. Now, all of a sudden, they're trying to keep those teachers and then a lot more teachers want to go. Uh, they don't want to finish out the year. Tom Cummings with the Bear County Federation of Teachers Union says teachers are expected to help students catch up, prepare for testing, follow state mandates, and deal with discipline problems, all issues breaking teachers. What we're seeing this year is we're seeing experienced teachers, ones who, who have for years dealt with the challenges of being a teacher, saying, no, I, I, I can't deal with it anymore. Paul Tapp with the Association of Professional Educators says the teacher exit has become a crisis. State data analyzed by the Texas Tribune shows 471 reports of teachers abandoning their jobs. That's up 61 percent year to year. The State Board of Education can either suspend or revoke a teacher's certification for leaving the job without a reasonable cause. But there may be a solution. You reduce their workload a little bit, not in terms of teaching, but in terms of all the other mountains of things, paperwork and checking boxes that we're asked to do, and then you give them a raise, suddenly this job is much more manageable. And Texas is facing a teacher shortage, but the state is trying to address the issue. The Texas Education Agency established a teacher vacancy task force in March. It is scheduled to hold its second meeting next month. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News.
hopefully they can figure out how to find a solution to the problem. All right, so here's a live look right now. This is Sky 12 over the Techport Center in southwest uh, San Antonio. Temperature yep. right now, 77 degrees. Do you have any idea what is going on inside there tonight? Oh, I know. The Smashing Pumpkins, smashing pumpkins. are playing. Yes. And right now, Stephanie is like, who are the Smashing Pumpkins? <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> they're doing, they're doing what true. in there? I'm not They're smashing bad. what? I know, they've been it's around a, for a it's while. A, it's a rock group. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> She knows, Steve. <laughs> what oh, are they doing to pumpkins? <laughs> <laughs> Careful with those pumpkins. Uh, so some morning drizzle and a few sprinkles. And we're going to see that trend continue for the next couple of days. A few actual storm chances, though. We'll get into that in a moment. And a hot weekend ahead. I know it's Monday. The weekend's still kind of in the distant future here. But I want to prepare you for it, just so you know right now to get ready for it. Take a look at our forecast temperatures. Upper 80s near 90 all the way through Thursday. Then we get into Friday 96, Saturday and Sunday right near 100 for the high temperature. That would put us close to record challenging territory. So something to prepare for. You've been warned this weekend is going to be a hot one. Now here's the satellite and radar. We talked about this a little bit earlier. You know, May is typically the most active month for severe weather across the state of Texas. We are a big state, though. That doesn't mean that we're guaranteed a bunch more severe weather. It's just typically when we get it, a lot of it's in August. And take a look at the action right now. Moving across the Red River toward Dallas-Fort Worth and at Wichita Falls area. That's where we have the severe thunderstorms pushing southward. This is along a cold front. That cold front's going to stall to the north of us tomorrow and not provide us any help in getting some showers and storms going. Let, let's get into our future cast. So we are expecting some storms tomorrow, but specifically farther to the west. Low gray clouds in the morning, a few spits of drizzle and a few areas of sprinkles to start the day. Not a big deal. Even by the noon hour, still gray, but by the afternoon, we'll squeeze in a few hours of sunshine, but that's when some storms should start to flare up in Mexico, drift eastward, and probably affect some of our border communities anywhere from Valverde County all the way down to Southern Maverick County, including Del Rio and the possibility of Eagle Pass as well. That's going to be tomorrow afternoon on into the evening. The chance of maybe even a rogue severe thunderstorm, but it is unlikely any of this is going to make it very far to the east. I mean, maybe Uvalde to Lakey, that's about it. So our storm chance tomorrow is out west. 20% then on Wednesday for the rest of us, 30% on Thursday. We're not expecting much in terms of coverage of those storms, but if something does pop up, it could quickly become strong to severe, so something to watch. Hey, last night, early this morning, 13 hundredths of an inch of rain and even higher amounts farther to the south. 70 degrees, dew points right now. Air temperatures in the 70s to near 80. We'll start the day tomorrow in the lower 70s. Then by the afternoon, we make it well into the 80s, even lower 90s farther south of San Antonio. And you look ahead, we talked about that hot weekend. Sunny and well into the 90s. Get ready for the heat. 99. Mm. All right, thanks, Adam. Okay, so riddle me this. How is it possible for the Spurs to have home games not in San Antonio. Well, it's possible that the Bear County Commissioners allow it. In this particular case, they've done Mexico in the past in that area, but they've never done Austin before. And that's the biggest concern we're seeing on social media reaction to this is they fans feel they're testing possible new locations. When we come back, we'll hear what the Spurs have to say about why Austin and is the Cowboys second round draft pick the next Randy Gregory coming up. As you heard at the top of our newscast, the Spurs are asking Bear County Commissioner's Court tomorrow to approve four home games each of the next two seasons at locations other than the AT&T Center that includes a total of four in Austin or as a request is stated within a 100-mile radius. Fans seem to be okay with the games in Mexico and the Al Alamo Dome, of course, for the Spurs' 50th anniversary celebration next year. But the four in Austin are concerning since Michael Dell is a new minority owner in the team and UT just built the brand-new Moody Center that George Strait and Willie Nelson happened to just open this past weekend. But the Spurs assure us this is part of a new an innovative marketing campaign where they can control the venues using home games and after missing the playoffs the last three straight seasons it's a way to build their fan base from Mexico to Austin and everywhere in between. Here's what Spurs Sports and Entertainment CEO R.C. Buford had to say about the proposal. He said in part, we are committed to finding new creative ways to purposely engage and celebrate our fans from Mexico to Austin continuing to expand our regional fan base. We believe San Antonio is uniquely positioned from a cultural, geographic and economic standpoint 
Pipeline to serve as the anchor for this region. San Antonio has been home for five decades, and the organization will continue to innovate, positioning the Spurs to thrive in San Antonio for the next 50 years. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. We are hearing more today on the Cowboys' second-round draft pick, edge rusher Sam Williams out of Ole Miss. Just what the Cowboys needed to replace Randy Gregory, he decided to sign with Denver. Just take a look at Williams' size and speed the Cowboys received by using their 56 overall pick. He's six foot four, 261 pounds, runs a 40 in 4.46. And here's something you may not have known. It was the Cowboys' own defensive coordinator, Dan Quinn, who worked out Williams at his pro day. Sounds like a match made in Cowboy heaven. It was a great experience. Um, then when I came up to the top 30 visit, it was like, man, me and him known each other for years. Like, we hit it off, like, just like that. And as soon as I got to my room, like, I was, I, me and my agent spent, like, I think 30 minutes of me talking about the facilities, the coaches, the game plan they have for me. Like, it, I like coach. Like, I mean, I told my agent, I said, I don't want to leave. I even told them, like, I'm going to miss my plane on purpose, so I'm going to have to leave. <laughs> on purpose. Like the Cowboys, the Houston Texans also use their second-round selection. 37th overall to boost their defense when they selected Jalen Petrie, a safety out of Baylor. He played five seasons for the Bears, was named All-American last year with 75 tackles, three and a half sacks, two interceptions, and three forced fumbles. And he and the third overall pick in the NFL draft, Derek Stingley Jr., should be able to contribute to the Texans defense immediately. That was ranked 31st last season versatile player they used him a little bit inside in the slot he played safety so he has some position versatility i think he might have a role in a kicking game um so tough instinctive football player i'd say jalen falls in the category of embodying the types of people and players that we want to have in this building um kind of their vigor um enjoy playing football and you see it in the way that he plays i mean he plays with his hair on fire and what makes it even better for jalen he gets to stay home in houston and suit up for the hometown team the UTSA football program produced two NFL draft picks over the weekend. We had to wait until Saturday, but for both of them, it was well worth the wait. First, Spencer Burford went to the San Francisco 49ers in the fourth round with the 134th pick overall. The six foot four, 304 pound offensive lineman is out of Wagner High School. A little bit later on his former Roadrunner teammate, quarterback Tariq Woolen was picked up by the Seattle Seahawks in the fifth round with the 153rd overall selection. What was Woolen's reaction to being drafted by the Seahawks who didn't have much contact with him? I was just shocked just because, you know, uh, I was thinking I was going to go a little earlier. But at the same time, I was just shocked because, you know, just the history of the Seahawks having great DBs, having great secondary. A great season for UIW's women's golf team. Next. Congratulations go out to the University of the Incarnate Word women's golf team. That's after all five members were named to the 2021-2022 Southland women's golf all-conference teams. They were led by Ellen Nicholas, who was named Southland Conference Player of the Year on top of her first team selection. Hannah Cash was also named to the SLC first team, while Alex Giles, Lily Hurst, and Estefania Hurtado received third team honors. And Nicholas is headed to the NCAA Regional Tournament in Stillwater. I think this year has been a team that's been very different to previous teams um, and we we work really well together as a five and that is that is definitely why we're all in all in conference teams we've made so many big steps this year like we've become one of the teams that like people know on campus like people we're like doing well in conference um, becoming one of the best teams in the school so it's really exciting a good year for us all Congratulations. As you can see, they go overseas to bring in some of these star athletes. Love not, that. A, not a Texas accent. I don't hear y'all. No, <laughs> no. Don't worry. It won't be long before she's mixing. Absolutely. Open, which yeah. I dig. <laughs> we'll be right back. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. GMSA at 430 a.m. Have a great night.